Hello everyone. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today, inshallah, we will discuss very important topic, the enhanced recovery program with the cesarean section. Actually, this uh, video or this recording, it's up on request from many candidates, how to manage this station in the exam. We don't have like enough data or papers discuss discussing this point, enhanced recovery with the cesarean section, because actually it's applied here in UK only in the gynae patients or for the gynae surgeries, not with the cesarean sections. So how to go through this station? My first advice, use the same resources of the gynae surgeries, but we can change some terms into another terms which would be suitable for the obstetric or the pregnant lady. So let's go through the case and I will show you how to change the terms and how to use the same pathway of the enhanced recovery program in the gynae here in the cesarean section and also you will find extra points i added here in the slides so just go through it and you are done with this topic so first of all when you will have a structured discussion my advice all the time to give introduction to give the definition of the topic you you're gonna speak about or what about the aim of the enhanced recovery program the benefits of that so the enhanced recovery pathway improve the quality and the experience of the patients enhanced recovery program will enable a speed recovery or to recover for the patient to recover more quickly leave the hospital sooner reduce the physical psychological mental stress and also with better outcomes for the patient and with less cost for the NHS. So this is the main benefits of the Enhanced Recovery Program. We can give the Enhanced Recovery Program another names like Fast Track or Rapid or Accelerated Recovery. So from its name, you can tell the examiner from its name, Enhanced Recovery Program, it's a pathway to enhance the patient recovery with better outcomes, less Coast and also the patient can go back to her life, normal life, like her work, her family, like more quickly. So this will facilitate more rapid recovery, short uh, length of the hospital stay and return to normal activity more quickly. This is the, the pathway and the famous one from the TOG article. Is it suitable to apply this pathway in the cesarean section? Yes. So how to do that? And after this slide, we will go to the extra points I added here. So for example, when you will go to the referral from the primary care, no. We will tell the examiner that we have to pick the patient. Why to pick the patient? Because it's not applied in the cesarean section. So you're going to say, I will uh, ask this patient, are you happy to join the enhanced recovery program? If yes, okay. So this patient with us in the enhanced recovery program. Then pre-operative, we will remove this term or this word to be a visit or a meeting or antenatal care um, like a date, 28 weeks. So we have a visit with the patient around 28 weeks. On day of admission will be the same. Intraoperative, it will be during cesarean section. It's the same. Post-operative, it will be postpartum. And follow up, it's the same discharge criteria. It's almost the same with minimal changes. So again, instead of referral from the GP or primary care, pick the patient who, will, who you will apply the enhanced recovery program on her. And preoperative assessment clinic or assessment appointment, we will have an appointment with the patient around 28 weeks of her pregnancy. Then on day of admission, same. Intraoperative, same post-operative, postpartum, and then the follow-up with this patient. So what to do in that when you will pick the patient? So pick the patient, ask her, are you happy to join? Yes, optimize the patient condition, like check her homoglobin level. If it's not done at the start of the pregnancy at booking, manage any pre-existing comorbidities or mor morbidities like diabetes, hypertension, if this patient has any problem, so we have to optimize. And then at 28 weeks, we will have an appointment with the patient. The patient has to see the consultant, the midwife, the anesthetist, and we need to speak with the patient uh, about the delivery 
uh, and the cesarean section, what will be done, and also it's usually with the elective cesarean section, so it's not with the emergency one. We'll speak with her what will happen a day before the section and on the day and when she will be discharged. And also don't forget to assess this patient regarding her hemoglobin level at 28 weeks. And if this patient has any problem like anti, um, anti red cell antibody, like anti C or she's RH negative, don't forget to measure that antibody titer on that visit. Okay, so this is around 28 weeks. And then on the day of admission, it's better to admit the patient on the same day, optimize with the fluid hydration, we can give the patient carbohydrate loading, yes, with the cesarean section, yes. And what is the benefit of admission on the same day? This will reduce the patient starvation, the patient dehydration, less hospital stay, less cost, because it's like uh, we, we will reduce the bed usage in the NHS. No or reduced oral bowel preparation, for sure, it's not applied in the cesarean section. Um, during the cesarean section, here, no minimally invasive surgery because it's cesarean section. So we will use the transverse incision. Better to use the dual cohen incision because they found that it's uh, with better outcomes after surgery, less fever after the, the, the cesarean section. So the patient will be less febrile and also with less hospital stay and good healing. So dual cohen, this is the preferred one. No nasogastric tube for sure with the cesarean section. Use the regional anesthesia like epidural or spinal instead of the general. Optimize the fluid management. Keep the patient warm during the cesarean section by using heat, uh, sorry, heat uh, blankets under the patients. Uh, individualized goal-directed fluid therapy. Keep the patient hydrated, full stop. So this is during the cesarean section. Avoid the drains unless it's indicated. Avoid the vaginal packs. Uh, nasogastric tube no rule here in the cesarean section. Postpartum, planned mobilization. So we will ask the patient to be to move to be mobile or to mo to move around or to walk around if it's suitable. So for example, patient on epidural, you will not ask her, oh, go and have move around here. No, planned mobilization. Once the patient can do that, rapid hydration for this patient. And once the patient can eat and drink, so we have to remove the IV line as soon as possible. Appropriate IV therapy, no, no wound drains, but if it's necessary, yeah, we can do that. For example, patient on a blood thinner, a low molecular weight heparin. So at that time, we have to put a drain to avoid or to, to see if we have any collection, but it's better to be avoided. For sure, no nasogastric tube not indicated here. Catheters removed early as soon as possible and stop here and tell the examiner however if the patient she suffered from any sort of postpartum urine retention it's safe to send the patient home with a catheter and then to call her back for trial without a catheter so no admission for just a catheter so take care of this point regular oral uh, analgesia instead of the paracetamol or sorry instead of the uh, codeine or uh, the morphia to allow more mobility, we have to depend more on the paracetamol sample painkiller, avoidance of any opiates, as we mentioned, because it will affect the patient um, mobility. And also it might affect like the codeine, it might affect the baby with the breastfeeding. So it's a very important point. Then the follow-up discharge the patient. Once we have all the criteria, Keep the follow-up and uh, discharge criteria to the upcoming slides with extra details here. But this slide, I'm just showing you how we can apply the same pathway with the cesarean section, okay? So let's go to the specific points here. Um, when you will call the consultant to attend the cesarean section, very important, I added here two extra slides because in the labor world, usually you are not sure you, I, I can do this cesarean section or not, or I have to call the consultant or not. So here I put two slides for this reason. If you have placenta previa, so you have to call your consultant. If the cesarean section on full dilatation, it means emergency cesarean section in the second stage or second stage uh, cesarean section for a delay or for an emergency. Multiple pregnancy. If we have large fibroids, the patient will be liable to have bleeding. If we have cesarean section less than 32 weeks for any reason like IUGR and preterm 
So at the time, it has to be with the consultant. Transverse lie. If we have more than two previous cesarean sections, take care of this point. It's like a recent recall in the labor word fertilization in the exam. If you have two or more, so at that time, it's better to call your consultant. Fetal anomaly expected with difficult delivery. If we have intrauterine fetal death, if we have suspected or actual uterine rupture, take care of this again in the labor world. So once you have pathological CTG and this patient with previous cesarean section, you have to suspect uterine rupture. Uterine rupture, we have the, the most common or the first sign to search for or to find is the pathological CTG. Number two, hematuria. Number three, lax abdomen. You will not feel the uterus contracted. Sometimes you might feel the baby's part or the fetal parts like the hand, the foot, and so on. So once you suspect uterine rupture, it's a case for a consultant. Previous laparotomy, body mass index greater than 40 and take care of the BMI in the exam as well. So please keep in mind when you will call your consultant for a cesarean section. During the pregnancy, what to do? Number one, decision to go on enhanced recovery program. Pick the patient who you will offer her a place in this uh, program. Because as I told you, it's not a routine to be offered in UK. Then, so this is instead of the GP referral. This point at 28 weeks, the patient will come to check her full blood count, especially the hemoglobin. If we have any antibody, and what about the antibody titer? We can give her iron supplementation to correct any problem with the hemoglobin level. And a follow-up test, again, up to three days before the scheduled day, we have to offer again the full blood count. Um, at this meeting, the patient has to see, as I mentioned, the consultant, the midwife, and also the anesthesia team or the anesthetist. We can give the patient a prescription of the antacid tablet to guard against the reduce the heartburn and prevent the complication of the acid reflux as well, okay? So we can give the antacid one day before, like one day before the, the section and also in the morning. So this is how to counsel the patient at 28 weeks. Preoperative appointment, as we mentioned, midwife, anesthetist to discuss the pain relief. Everything has to be fulfilled with the patient. You, we would offer you general anesthesia. No, it will be epidural or a spinal. Respect the patient wishes. It has to be a shared decision. Possibility of nausea and vomiting and how we will guard against this point, giving her anti-sickness medication immediately before the cesarean section and immediately after. Catheter removal and mobilization. It has to be discussed with the patient. Expectation regarding the normality and discharge. One of the important points now in enhanced recovery program, generally speaking, not only in the cesarean section, that you will tell the patient you will be admitted on that day and you will be discharged if everything would be okay on that day, same day, next day. So the date of discharge has to be known with the patient. On the day of the cesarean section, the patient has to come early morning, like 7 a.m. We will ask her to stop eating solid food at midnight. So this point, because it's a conflict point, confusing point here, two hours for fluid, four hours for food, but just to be light and carbohydrate drinks, and six to seven hours, so midnight to, to stop the solid food. So from midnight, we will stop the, so, the solid food onwards, clear fluids in, to, to include non-fizzy drinks, we can allow tea, coffee, we can allow, but without milk, because with milk will not be considered clear. We can allow this up to two hours before the cesarean section. And again, the anesthetist has to see the patient, okay? So look here, when you will count, you will find the anesthetist will meet the patient four times. One in at 28 weeks, again, on the same day of cesarean section, during cesarean section, and after cesarean section next day before discharge. So four times the anesthetist has to see the patient. With the anesthetist, what to do or what about the discussion? Is it uh, general or regional anesthesia? So the, the anesthetist will give the patient pros and cons of each one. And if we will offer her general anesthesia, 
So at that time, we can offer her tap block after general anesthesia, very important. The anesthetist has to give the patient small amount of IV fluids at cesarean section, but it has to be on individualized basis. So there is no like a specific uh, amount, no, on individualized. We need to keep this patient well and hydrated. We can use the heating blanket under the patient to keep the patient warm. They found that the hypothermia will affect the recovery and will cause, com com so will cause some complications in the patient. Antiemetics to be given IV, slowly IV, before transfer to the recovery uh, room. So this is the rule of the anesthetist during the cesarean section. Midwife, what is the rule of the midwife? Facilitate skin-to-skin -skin contact. Facilitate also the breastfeeding as early as possible. And here, stop and tell the examiner what is the importance of skin-to-skin -skin contact. And also, it would be like another benefit of using the spinal anesthesia. The patient will be aware and she will be conscious during cesarean section. So skin-to-skin -skin contact will um, keep the, the, the baby warm so the, the mother's temperature will be transferred to the baby. This is number one. It will increase the success rate of a start of the breastfeeding. Usually, especially with the primary gravida, there will be like failure of the breastfeeding, but with the skin-to-skin -skin contact, there is, will be uh, increased success rate and also the communication and the connection between the mother and the baby. Even it will affect the psychological aspects or the mental health of the mom and it will enhance her recovery. So skin-to-skin -skin contact, when you will mention in the exam, stop and tell the examiner the benefits of skin-to-skin -skin contact. Okay, as you can see here, improve the breastfeeding success, plus keep the baby with a good temperature, not hypothermic, and the communication, the connection between the mom and the baby, and also it will improve the mental health of the mother, and it, it will help her to recover well. In the recovery room, what to do? Routine post-operative monitoring. Baby to be fed in the recovery immediately. Once the mother in the recovery, the midwife will come and help her to breastfeed her baby. Encourage the woman to drink in the recovery so you, we can remove the IV line. Painkillers to be given. We need this patient to be pain-free. Low molecular weight heparin if needed. We will start in the recovery. The next day, what to do? We need to remove the catheter 6 a.m. in the morning. However, if the patient not on uh, in any spinal anesthesia or epidural, so at that time, we can remove the catheter at night, the night before. So the cesarean section today is morning. At night, we can remove the catheter. But if the patient on epidural spinal, she cannot control and also she, she's not able to be mobile and to, to go to the toilet, at that time, keep the catheter, remove it next day morning time. We will ask the mother to start gentle mobilization. This will reduce the risk of DVT. Check the full blood count again before discharge this patient, her hemoglobin. Anesthetist, look here. He will come, sorry, he will come one more time to ensure that we don't have any problem, especially from the spinal. Baby check will be done by the neonatology team. Midwife team will review many points here. Overall well-being of the mother, the wound, the blood results. If everything is okay, the patient fulfilled all the discharge criteria. We will come to this point. So it's okay to discharge. Checklist to go home. So we have a checklist. Pain, the patient, this pain adequately controlled with simple painkiller to allow mobilization. Ability to walk, pass urine, eat and drink, hemoglobin level, no other concern. Okay, you can be discharged. So once the patient pain free, she's mobile, she can eat, drink, pass urine, and her hemoglobin level within the normal range, no other concern, no other maternal uh, will be in concern, so we can discharge the patient. Discharge arrangement and GP follow-up. So number one, with the discharge notes, we have to mention and note down the GP practice, uh, the name of the practice, the name of the GP, the doctor, and the, the uh, address of this GP practice. Okay, GP practice means the center, and GP name, the doctor, and the address of this 
GP practice. Discharge address should be confirmed. This patient will be in her home, house, and this is the address or in another address. So we have to confirm a house, uh, uh, sorry, a home visit uh, from the community midwife should be arranged. Uh, outpatient follow-up not required except if we have a complication. So now we have a complication. Okay, we will bring you after two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, according to the complication happen. Um, for example, for trial without a catheter. So we'll bring the patient after two weeks. Okay, if we will offer her a trial without a catheter next day, keep the patient admitted for one day, no problem, and trial without a catheter next day. And then if still there is retention, send the patient home with a catheter, give her the instructions how to take care of the catheter and the catheter hygiene, and then ask her to come after two weeks as outpatient uh, for trial without a catheter. So this is one example, okay? If the patient with perineal tear in, the, in, in case of the vagin vaginal uh, delivery, not here in the cesarean section, but it's like an example for the outpatient follow-up, so you will ask her to come six to 12 weeks after. So this is a follow-up. So according to the complication, we will give the follow-up appointment. Discussion regarding the family planning, very important point, and offer her the contraception. Medications to take home, give her the prescription. And even in the uh, after cesarean section, we, we can give the patient the medications itself. So you, you will not give just the prescription. No, give her the antibiotic if needed. Give her the blood thinners if needed. Give her the painkiller, uh, anti-emetics or... Um, anti-sickness medications if required. So give her all the medications before going home. Rubella status is very important, guys. So please don't forget it. We need to confirm that this patient is immunized or not. And if not immunized, please arrange and schedule for the vaccination 12 weeks after the delivery. Anti-D to be given. Don't forget the RH negative patients to give them the anti-D within 72 hours. So after delivery, up to 72 hours, this is the window to give the anti-D, and we may extend up to 10 days if it's not given within the first 72 hours. So please don't forget again the anti-D injection. Okay, guys, so this was the last slide here. I wish this is clear. Best of luck, inshallah, in the exam. One more thing, yeah, one more thing, please, guys. If you will be asked about the chewing gum, is it uh, um, suitable? Uh, of benefit or not yes it's of benefit it's advised even to be given to the patient because it will enhance the bowel uh, movements and uh, it will guard against the alias and any problem with the bowel so yes it's advised no problem regarding the bowel regarding the chewing gums okay guys thank you so much please keep practicing it's just few steps till you exam and uh, towards this prestigious certificate um Stay calm and relax it, but revise well. Uh, don't read any new things, just to go with like one video like that. Or um, if, you if you have like notes for the revision, just go through it. Relax, go, go to the exam with self-confidence. You will be able to do that. Okay, trust in yourself. And don't worry in the exam. If you have any station, uh, you did like in this station, not well or you feel like oh i i didn't make well here so please ignore move forward in your exam it's 14 stations to be assessed just stay calm ignore any bad station and move forward and inshallah you will do it okay thank you so much assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah